They're being sent to the front lines, arms only a whistle. They're being sent out as human shields. Um, wrote this blog that night. Honestly, guys, everything about this whole thing, this whole year has been um, just doing the very best we can with what we have. Um, and, and what we've had has been small. Um, wrote this blog, sent it out to 80 friends and family. That was our Google group. And they literally forwarded it around the world. Over a million people have now read it. Um, they forwarded it, and they forwarded it, and they forwarded it. They forwarded it with the kind of urgency in which it was written. And I woke up the next morning in a war region with hundreds and hundreds of emails asking, what can we do? How do we help? What's going on? Why is this happening? And I'm like, I have no idea. I just got here. I have <laughs> not a clue. Um, Spent another month in the region, meeting with everyone you can imagine, warlords, rebel leaders, journalists, governors, anyone who would answer our questions. Came home, and this was about a year ago, broke, homeless, jobless, no idea what to do about this massive, massive holocaust that's happening that the media ignores, that uh, the world tends to turn a blind eye to. What do you do about a problem that size? And one of my best friends, Marcus, who's in that installation, I hope you guys will go and see, he put a whistle around my neck. And he said, no matter where this fight takes you, Make sure those boys are alive in your heart. Make sure that they stay at the forefront of this fight. Um, so then we're wearing a whistle. And people started asking, what's the whistle? Um, we got the chance to speak up to the boys. And what we realized is that before any change can ever happen, there has to be whistleblowers. That the crux of any change throughout all of history, there's always been whistleblowers. Before you could have a million people marching on the Washington, you had Rosa Parks saying, no, I will not get up. We've always had those individuals who are brave enough to say what everyone else is thinking, such as genocide is not acceptable in the 21st century. We won't allow it, we won't tolerate it, we will do everything we can to stand in the way of it. The world has said over and over again, never again. And we will keep them to that promise. There have always been people who stood up and who protested. The whistles are a symbol of protest. Uh, we started selling it out of our pockets and out of the back of our cars, screaming at the world while sleeping on couches. Kids are dying. Uh, it had to happen. We didn't even know what to do. Dave hitchhiked from Texas to New York City over the course of four months, sleeping out in the snow and the sleet. Marcus slept in an attic to do design work for free. John sold his company, packed his car, and drove across the country to come and work, do finance and logistics for free. We had three kids who rode their bicycles from Florida to San Diego, stopped in 30 cities during the summer in the desert, spread the word about what was happening in Congo, start raising money to help solve the problem. We had 12 interns who have come from all over North America to come and sleep in bunk beds, uh, work for no money, in a smelly, stinky, sweaty garage office that we call home. <laughs> we've had neighbors like Bardo. Guys, if you haven't been to Bardo, go. It's on Main Street. These are our neighbors, and they've contributed all the food tonight. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> a year later, we're here tonight because people have given all they could with what they had. When, we, when people say, how can we help, we say, let me answer your question with another question. What do you love? What do you love to do? How do you love to do it? Do that in a way that helps. Be a whistleblower for peace. Lizzie Fortunato has whistles in the back. She read the story, said, what can I do to help? We said, what do you do? What do you love? She's like, I make jewelry. We were like, perfect. Make jewelry. Give us the money. OK, great. <laughs> um, our first tour was with a comedian who traveled his short film. And he was like, this is my statement of protest. Right? He used his comedy as a platform spread the word about what was happening in Congo. Preston's an actor, a model, so is Jody. They use their platform to spread the word. These are unorthodox ways of protesting. There are days from fist to the sky, right, to save the world. And then there's every other day. Uh, I think that in the end, the peace symbol is impotent in some ways because it is ambiguous. But the whistle's very, very specific. It's about your role, my role, every single day in this fight for peace. Changing the conversation in America. Changing the conversation in the West. Shifting these cycles of conversations in order to give those who have no voice a voice. Using that which is most fundamental to our freedom, 
our speech so that they might have it. So a year later, we're rehabilitating 270 kids in the war region. The program is Congolese led, Congolese envisioned, Congolese operated. The kids will never know about falling whistles. They don't know about you know, a bunch of rich kids hanging out in Los Angeles at a party. <laughs> they have no idea that this is happening. All they know is that they're getting the care that they need from Congolese leaders. So you've stopped cycles of dependency and you've stopped cycles of violence. Because beaten boys will beat their own boys and we have to stop those cycles. We're rehabilitating 270 kids in the war region. We have a full-time DC liaison that's creating a sandbox for all these different groups to come together and advocate together. And we're advocating from almost every state. And so your job, then this is the only way it works. It's the only reason we're here today, a year later, the only way it works is if you will use your talents and your passions in a way that creates a freer world. Use them to speak out. Use them to speak up. Um, guys, we're so honored that you're here. Please sign on the email list. Um, please buy a whistle. Please donate if you can. Um, and we live right down in Venice. We're having a party tomorrow night if you guys want to come. It's going to be great. Um, but honestly, we're, we're around, and we need help, and we love all of you. And we're so very, very thankful that you're here. Last thing I'll say is, um, if, 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 if the people in Congo that we're working with were here right now, they would party their minds out. Uh, they would dance, they would sing, they would enjoy every possible moment. So we ask you to do the exact same thing. Celebrate the freedom you've been given. Let's work to make sure that other people have it as well. So thanks, guys. Good night. Yeah.